at Air Venture Oshkosh, there was some great big news earlier in the week, and it's been so busy around here, we couldn't even get the attention of one of our favorite fellows from Rotax here, but now we do. Week's almost over, people starting to wind down a little bit, tomorrow's the last day. I'm Dan Johnson, I'm talking with Mark Becker from Rotax in Austria, all the way across the ocean to show us what here, Mark? Correct, that's the new 915IS we announced on the press conference on Tuesday. It's going to be basically based on the 912IS Sport as we have it today. We put a little turbo on it with the intercooler to it, we will do some rework in the internals. And this way we will get it up to 135 horsepower. 135 horsepower. 135 That's a new benchmark for Rotax aircraft engines anyway. Correct. That's this is a company impressive. that makes lots of other engines, but you got an aircraft division and this is sort of the big boy for them. Correct. Right? That's going to be our new big toy. All right. Um, compare it for us, uh, because I've had a number of people ask yeah. me since you made your introduction yes. to the 914. Yes. It's only one digit difference, but what's the actual difference? Correct. Yeah, but the real difference is the 914 is based on the 80 horsepower, the 912 fuel oh, it is. with a turbo okay. on it. This one is based on the 912 IS, so we got a bigger displacement. We got about 1,352 cc okay. with the injection to it already. So we reuse the injection system, but then added the turbo on to get up to that power we would be think that people really want to see right now. So we plan to go be ready for start of production and the ASTM as well as the certified version by okay. second half of 2017. So a bit more than two years to go from now. Okay. All right. So uh, in that time, you'll do the typical Rotex job, Correct. I'm sure, of evaluating every possible parameter of it. And then my guess is you're going to start working with some OEMs. That's what you, original airframers, we sometimes call them. Correct. To figure out the last bits of how it should work in an airplane Correct. environment. So we have this baby already running about 2,000 hours on the dyno, so we have a pretty good idea okay. of what it can do and how far we can take it. So it's now really the next step is to get it installed into some of the strategic OEMs and start with some flight testing early next year. Okay. And so that'll start even well. next year and then yeah. evaluate it for another whole year and then really about work a year, it out. And then it's going to be a rather 9 to 12 months for certification before we can have it on the market. Sure. And I know the airframe guys, uh, they need some time to prepare too. Now, physically it looks not that much much different than a 912 IS. Correct. It's basically the same size as a 912 IS, which all the, you have had to add to on the turbo and the intercooler. And that's where you go. Okay. So for can most you, of can the you come around here and point yeah. out those components to us, Mark, so we can see exactly what we're talking Correct. about here? Correct. So we will have an your turbo with a compression ratio of 1 to 3.5. Okay. That's an intercooler. That's an intermediate intercooler. We think that we find Because this heats the air up somehow. Oh, up. So Correct. So we need to cool it down, down before we get into okay. the system. But in the MV thing out, you can work with a little small intercooler, so actually that's pretty much all the difference you have to the existing 912 installation. So from a um, um, position wise, you should be pretty fine, you just need a little bit more space back here. Yeah, I can imagine some of the fellows are working on cowls and so forth, yeah. they've already made it, you know, they like them lean and tight of course. That's correct. And since you're liquid cool, they don't have to worry about a lot of airflow considerations that are a big deal on non-liquid oh, yes, cool airplanes. But this, uh, and you say, it, this is the first one anyone's ever seen, so yeah. uh, this one may be somewhat different in these aspects. Correct. Uh, Correct. And those components, uh, can they be relocated at all to help suit the airframe? There is some flexibility in the positioning of the turbos as well as in the intercooler to really fit as many um, cowlings as we possibly could. Sure, there's all different shapes and sizes. You work with like 200 of those people now, is Correct. that Correct, right? we've got more than 220 installations in total, or even of the 912 IS today, we already have one more than 100 designers ready to go. So that is a lot of things to, to, to take care of and that's a lot of consideration to put in to really make sure it's going to be a good fit from as many as we can. Yeah, sure. I'm sure that's true. So let's talk a little bit about now comparing the 914, which people already know about a lot. And that's, that's already 115 horse at least for uh, five minutes, I believe, is the yeah. number. And then it's 100 horse. But that gets you off and climbing in old uh, uh, float situations or yeah. high elevation situations. Correct. Or those who just want power to continue all the way up to yeah. altitude because it's good at that too. Yeah. This will share those characteristics? This will basically share this characteristic. As you said, we got about 135 um, horsepower full takeoff. Um, that will actually provide up to a height of at least 15,000 feet. Okay. So we can go pretty high up. Do these the, go yes. ahead, go ahead. The uh, maximum continuous power will be in the area of 127 horsepower. Okay, well not that much drop off from no. Uh, you know, 115 down to 100, that's a higher percentage than Correct. 135 down to 127. So yeah. you're really keeping the boost up there the whole time. Oh, yes. We, we, we just basically got a lot of requests. And yeah, like you know in the S, we had a lot of 
high altitudes, airports, a lot of people going through mountains and they want to have some extra punch, especially if they're high up, just to go around on any kind of obstacles or depending on the weather condition, just still have enough power and reserve to really do the job. Well, and we've also had a growing number of airplanes like the Icon. Uh, they're, they're sort of first in that parade, but there's yeah. several others right behind them that are going, okay, well, if you had a little more power, because when you get to a certain point in certain kinds of airplanes, yeah. you're sort of on the edge, it's safe, right. it's fine, but a little more would really give you that satisfaction that, all right, it's going to perform just like we designed it to be. Correct. That's also part of the decision why we really actually now announce it already, but we don't have it available yet because we see all these requests coming in from people. Hey, guys, when can we have some more You want to let them know that it's coming. So, yeah. so you have some time, as you said, the OEMs, it does take them some time to really make it work to go for all the certification. And we want them to start as early as we possibly could. So by end of 2017, I not only have an engine available, I also have some it's a few models to available there, to fly right? with. Yeah. And then you can start producing them in volume. Okay, so what do these components down here, do they add a lot of weight to, let's compare 914, which yeah. also is turbo. Yeah. So how much weight addition does this bring to the 914? A dry weight, we are actually expecting for this one, it's going to be in the area of 185 pounds. Okay. That's including the turbo and the intercooler. So it's a little bit more than we have on the 914. What's the 914 number equivalent? 914 is about, I think, like eight, um, something like in the area of 78 or something. Yeah, that's kilos, okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, kilos. That's all right. So that's actually a fairly similar number. Yeah, it's basically what we will have. We will have the 912 IS pricing plus the, add, the cost of the turbo and the extra control systems. Well, compared to the 912 IS, we expect an increase of something in the area of maybe 20%. Okay, so so still, considering you're getting, well, let's see, that's probably more than, more than 20% power. power, so, yeah. you know, that, that's how it works. Plus, it's a very modern concept. You need to do thorough testing. We've got all the injection system, which we're redoing, which we're having a really good experience on the IS now, and I think that's going to be the product people would really like. Yeah, you're combining the best of the 912 with the fuel injection, and it's reduction in uh, economy, uh, it's increase in economy, economy yeah. reduction in use of fuel. And actually it's, it's a new turbo, it's not the same turbo as we have on the 940, okay. it's a bigger turbo, we have a higher compression rate, in order to really get all this altitude compensation up to the 15,000. The ceiling we expect to be around 23,000 actually. Really? So wow. you have okay. quite some reserve for your flights. Excellent. 35% more power yeah. than the other one, uh, fuel consumption I'm guessing won't even be that much more. No, I would rather think of something in the area of 25, maybe 30 percent, really depending on how far you want to really take it on, right, right. on the engine, but that's about what we, most of what we expect to. All right, good. Well, we will watch with interest as the 915 development continues, and the folks here in the, representing the product in the U.S. will be kept informed about it oh, like absolutely. you do so well. Uh, tell us how we can go to the website of Rotax and we'll put it on the screen for yeah. folks and they can continue to follow the action on the new 915. Correct. So the homepage we are as a company are using is www.flyrotax.com. That's where you get all the news and all the new information also on this engine. And that'll direct you to the U.S. representatives as well? Correct. You, you also find will find the dealer locator which will direct you to all the locators, uh, to the dealers worldwide. So wherever you want to go, that's your dealer. We know that the company itself, uh, you do the work, you show it to the public, but you don't deal with the public. You go strictly through your representatives that you've worked hard on for many, many years. So. Correct. In total, we have about 20 distributors worldwide with an extensive range of network. We have all these service center and repair center under them. So we get more than 220 points of contact for each requirement and each location you want to go to. Well, we probably reach about 220 countries with these videos, so each country's got a different place where they go to find Correct. that. Find it all on flyrotax.com. Lots more about Rotax, lots more about the en the airplanes that have Rotax engines in them, and all kinds of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Mark Becker and myself here at AirVenture Oshkosh.